Hi, here in lesson 3.4 we're continuing our exploration of simple classifiers by looking at decision trees, classifiers that produce decision trees. And uh, we're going to look at uh, J48. Uh, we've used this classifier quite a bit so far. Let's have a look at how it works inside. So J48 is based on a top-down strategy, a recursive divide-and-conquer strategy. You select which attribute to split on at the root node, and then you create a branch for each possible attribute value, and uh, that splits the instances into subsets, one for each branch, ex that extends from the root node, and then you repeat the procedure recursively for each branch, selecting an attribute at each node, and of course you use only instances that reach that branch to make the selection. And then at the end you stop, perhaps you might continue until all instances have the same class. So the trick is, the question is, how do you do the selection? How do you select a good attribute for the root node? Well, this is the weather data. And as you can see, Outlook has been selected for the root node. Well, here are the four possibilities. Outlook, windy, humidity, and temperature. And these are the consequences of splitting on each of these attributes. Now, what we're really looking for is a pure split, a split into pure nodes. We would be delighted if we find an attribute that split exactly into one node where they're all yeses and another node where they're all noes and perhaps a third node where they're all yeses again. That would be the best thing. What we don't want is mixtures because when we get mixtures of yeses and noes at a node then we've got to split again. So you can see splitting an outlook looks pretty good. We get uh, one branch with two yeses and three noes and then we get a pure yes branch for overcast and when outlook is rainy we get three yeses and two nodes. Two noes. So how are we going to quantify this to decide which one of these attributes produces the purest nodes? We're on a quest here for purity. Well, the aim is to get the smallest tree. And top-down tree induction methods uh, use some kind of heuristic. And the most popular heuristic to produce pure nodes is an information theory-based heuristic. I'm not going to explain information theory to you. That would be another MOOC of its own. Quite an interesting one, actually. Information theory was uh, founded by uh, Claude Shannon, an American mathematician and scientist who died about 12 years ago. He was an amazing guy. He did some amazing things. One of the most amazing things, I think, is that he could ride a unicycle and juggle clubs at the same time when he was in his 80s. That's pretty impressive, I think. Anyway, he came up with the whole idea of information theory and quantifying entropy, which measures information in bits. And this is the formula for entropy. It's a sum of p log p's for each of the possible outcomes. And I'm not really going to explain it to you. All those minus signs are there because logarithms are negative if numbers are less than one, and probabilities always are less than one. So the entropy comes out to be a positive number. So what we do is we look at the information gain. How much information in bits do you gain by knowing the value of an attribute? That is, the entropy of the distribution before the split minus the entropy of the distribution after the split. And here's how it works out for the weather data. These are the number of bits. If you split on Outlook, you gain 0.247 bits. Now, I know you might be surprised to see fractional numbers of bits. Normally, we think of 1 bit or 8 bits or 32 bits. But the information theory shows how you can regard bits as fractions. And these produce fractional numbers of bits. I don't want to go into the details. And you can see that Windy gives you, knowing the value for Windy, gives you only 0.048 bits of information. Humidity is uh, quite a bit better. Temperature is way down there at 0 0.029 bits. So we're going to choose the attribute that gains the most bits of information, and that, in this case, is Outlook. So at the top level of this tree, the root node, we're going to split on Outlook. Well, having decided to split on Outlook, we need to look at each of the three branches that emanate from Outlook, corresponding to three possible values of Outlook. 
and uh, consider what to do at each of those branches. So at the first branch, we might split on temperature or windy or humidity. We're not going to split on outlook again because we know that outlook is sunny. All instances that reach this place, the outlook is sunny. So for the other three things, we do exactly the same thing. We evaluate the information gained for temperature at that point, for windy and humidity, and we choose the best. In this case, it's humidity with a gain of 0.971 bits, because you can see that if we branch on humidity around here, then we get pure nodes, three nodes in one and two yeses in another. And when we get that, we don't need to split anymore. We're again on a quest for purity. So that's how it works. It just carries on until it reaches the end, until it has pure nodes. So let's uh, open up Weka and uh, just do this with the nominal weather data. Of course, we've done this before, but I'll just do it again. It won't take long. J48 is kind of the workhorse data mining algorithm. There's the data. We're going to uh, choose J48. It's a tree classifier. There we go, and we're going to run this, and uh, we get a tree, the very tree I showed you before, split first on outlook, sunny, overcast, rainy, and then if it's sunny, split on humidity, three uh, instances reach that node, then split on normal, three yes instances reach that node, and so on. Or we can look at the tree using the uh, visualize, the right click menu, visualize the tree, here it is. And we'll fit that to the screen. And these are the number of yes instances that reach this node and the number of no instances. In the case of this particular tree, of course, we're using cross-validation here. So it's done an 11th run on the whole data set. And it's given us these numbers by looking at the training set. So in fact, uh, all of uh, this becomes a pure kind of node here. Sometimes you get two numbers here, 3 slash 2 or 3 slash one and uh, those indicate the first number indicates the number of correct things that reach that node so in this case the number of no's and then if there was another number following the three that would indicate the number of yeses that is incorrect things that reach that node but that doesn't occur in this uh, very simple situation so there you have it j48 top down induction of decision trees it's soundly based in information theory it's a pretty good data mining algorithm. Maybe 10 years ago, I might have said it was the best data mining algorithm, but some uh, uh, even better ones, I think, have been produced uh, since then. However, the real advantage of J48 is that it's reliable, it's robust, and most importantly of all, it produces a tree that people can understand. It's very easy to understand the output of J48, and that's really important when you're applying data mining. There are a lot of different criteria you could use for attribute selection. Here we're using information gain. Actually, in practice, these don't normally make a huge difference. There are some important modifications that need to be done to this algorithm to be useful in practice. I've only really explained the basic principles. The actual J48 incorporates some more, some more complex stuff to make it work under different circumstances in practice. And we'll talk about those in the next lesson. Section 4.3 of the text, uh, Divide and Conquer, Constructing Decision Trees, explains the simple version of J48 that I've explained here. And then now you should go and do the activity associated with this lesson. Good luck. See you next time.